Hi, it's Matt again. Uh, right now, I am where you normally see me. You're used to seeing me in front of my layout. Uh, I have a few electronic projects coming up, so I'm going to show you my workbench, just in case you were interested in what you might need to get started on your own electronic projects on your layout. So here we are at my workbench. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview on some tools and equipment that you're going to need to get started with building your own electronics, or really repairing anything, locomotives, rolling stock, anything on your layout. A lot of these tools you're going to need to do that, so let's get right into it. First and foremost, you're going to need a, a work surface, which we're right in front of mine, a workbench. If you don't have a dedicated workbench like mine, any table will do. If you're going to do a lot of soldering or any kind of work, I really highly recommend that you put a piece of plywood or something over top of it to protect the surface and keep it looking nice. If you have a dedicated workbench like I do, well, that's what they're for. One of the more basic things you're going to need is some magnification. This right here makes me look really stylish. These usually run about uh, $15 or so. This one is five times magnification. It used to have a little thing to come down and make it 10 times magnification, and I'm getting dizzy looking at the camera, so I'm going to roll it up. Uh, but when you're working on electronics to check your solder joints or to look at a lot of the small stuff, magnification really helps. Working on locomotives, working on rolling stock, it also helps a lot there. So I highly, highly recommend some of the stylish eyewear. First up is the cornerstone of working on anything electric, the digital multimeter. This is an older Radio Shack one I've had for several years. Um, it has lots of different stuff. You can pick these up anywhere, Harbor Freight or Amazon. Just make sure it has both voltage, for reading voltage of course, and ohm setting for reading resistance. If you have those two, you can pretty much work on anything. All the other stuff, it's just extra. But voltage and resistance are the two most important things. Um, I'm going to show you the leads that I have. They are not the standard leads that came with it. Got this nice little carrying case here. Uh, first thing you're going to see me pull out. You know, let me see, I'm sitting there fumbling with it. <laughs> okay, so that is a thermal couple. You probably won't use those around the layout. That is important. That is a probe. They have smaller probes that are almost needlepoint. And these are little clamping probes, which are really handy for clamping on wires and whatnot. Next thing every workbench shouldn't be without is a soldering iron. Uh, this is a pencil type soldering iron. Uh, they have gun type. I've never really used those too much. Um, and you probably really don't want to work. You want something that's going to be nice and... Uh, with a nice fine tip like this one has. See it's pretty fine there. That works best for the, the small stuff we'll be dealing with so that's what I would highly recommend. Here's my soldering station. It is a Yihui. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Definitely not Yihaw. Yihui 853D. I believe it was $150 on Amazon. This also has a DC power supply built into it, which is great for testing circuits. Heats up fairly quick. You can see the bottom number climbing there. Uh, this other thing hanging on the side, that is a hot air gun, which is very, very useful, especially with uh, having uh, shrink tubing, or if you mess up and you need to move something, you can uh, that actually gets hot enough to melt solder, so you can move stuff around if need be. Uh, I've seen a short amount of time, I had it set for 740 degrees, and so it's, uh, it's pretty close to getting there. Along with the soldering iron, uh, you're definitely going to need some solder. This is 22 thousandths inch solder. I use a lead tin silver alloy. Uh, seems to have the best melting and flow, which you'll also find uh, within soldering that flow is very important. But yeah, I have very good luck with that. When soldering, you're bound to make a mistake. That is why they make a solder sucker or desolder. Push the plunger, push the button, and that's how easy it works. So what you would do with this one is you would take your soldering iron, heat up the joint, put the desolder over it, and push the button. Uh, it sucks the solder up. That's why they call it a solder sucker. This is a nice gold color. Uh, they're very inexpensive on Amazon. Uh, it's the most economic way to desolder something, and it's very fun to play with. If you do a lot of soldering like myself, you'll want to invest in a desoldering gun. 
I have this little fella, about 125 bucks, 150 bucks or something. Uh, it's easy to use, just push the trigger, heat up the joint. It heats up the joint itself, sucks the solder in that little capsule you saw there. Um, little compact design, and they're also very fun to play with. Next very important tool that you must have, especially if you're doing a lot of soldering and wiring, are helping hands. Basically two little alligator clips that hold stuff for you, and thus helping hands. You can easily solder stuff, as you can see. Um, this is a very simple one, just has two alligator clips on it. Uh, that'll work for most everything. Uh, pretty nice, nice heavy base to it. That works just great. But if you're like me, start doing bigger and bigger and bigger projects, well, you need a bigger set of helping hands, or more or less more of them. This is a nice little guy. It still has a nice heavy metal base to it. Has four articulating um, arms, kind of like a little squid looking fellow there. Moving on to hand tools, this is probably the second most important piece of equipment you could have on a workbench is a pair of wire strippers. Uh, I would not buy cheap wire strippers, they wear out. Uh, these vice grips are very, very nice. You can get them pretty much any hardware store or I think even Lowe's. Very good pair. This will even crimp the uh, little uh, terminal ends with the insulation. It also does non insulated too. Uh, does between 12 and 22 gauge wire and also has a really nice pair of cutters. I would highly recommend this pair right here. Along with your wire strippers you will want what is right in this case right here which is a mess. Now it is a set of precision pliers as Craftsman put it 10 years ago when I bought this. Um, they come in very handy for all sorts of things. This kit has two types of wire cutters, both diagonal and top cutters, a very thin pair of needle nose, and then your standard angled and uh, regular needle nose, straight needle nose. Um, they call it a precision kit. I don't know if they still make it or not. Along with this kit, it is a good idea to get a set of tweezers. Uh, that are not tangled together, but tweezers come in very handy, especially with all the little small pieces and whatnot that you get. Uh, end pair there is really good for removing ICs. What tool list would be complete without these? Some screwdrivers. These are precision screwdrivers. Uh, I got these off of Amazon. They're the brand Gato. Uh, my wife gave them to me last year for Christmas. Actually, my cat gave them to me last year for Christmas. That, that's what it was. Uh, they come, and it has a little magnet on the back, and they come Phillips and flathead. So those are really nice. Uh, and I also have this nice little case here, Performax, that comes from Menards. And this has all sorts of bits. You can fix all sorts of electronics with this. I believe they touted you could take apart a cell phone with this. Comes with a nice little jeweler's screwdriver with a little round spinny thing up top, so it's really ergonomic in your hand to spin it. Uh, I actually fixed my Nintendo Wii with this recently too, so it uh, comes with tweezers and a bunch of other stuff. Again, that, I bought that at Menards probably for about $20, and it is money well spent. One thing to always remember is with the correct tools and the right amount of patience, which is quite a lot, in some determination, you can fix anything and everything around your layout. Uh, just don't be intimidated by it. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it informative. I appreciate you watching as always. And uh, If you feel that if there's anything that I missed that you think somebody should have on their workbench, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. And if you really liked it, subs please subscribe and uh, stay tuned. Thanks a lot.